Hey everyone, welcome to Zinni62 after NFL Draft Day 2. Biggest controversy is that Maurice Hurst, the defensive tackle out of Michigan, is still on the board. And I have some thoughts about that. First of all, everyone knows that Mr. Hurst was a first round slash second round pick. And no, he wasn't so good that he was the best non-quarterback player in the draft. That's debatable. But, I mean, look at Saquon Barkley, right? But he was good enough to be routinely in the conversation about what the top 30 players were. In some cases, for a number of people, the top 10 or top 15, depending on who you talk to. And then if you avoid that, all you have to do is simply look at the Michigan tapes. That's all you have to That's all. That's all. Just look at... The videos on YouTube about the countless number of, well, you can count them, number of plays he's made behind the backfield, blocks he's taken on and shedded, it's all there, right? As they say, ball don't lie, video don't lie in this instance, that you can make it lies beside the point. But look, all joking aside, Maurice Hurst was a first round talent, high second round talent, period. Then he fell. And the reason given is his heart condition. And then I heard someone, this is really what got my interest piqued, mention the name Hank Gathers. Hank Gathers is a famous basketball player who tragically passed away on the court because he had an irregular heartbeat for which he was taking a kind of beta blocker medication for, but he didn't really like taking the medication because of the way it felt. So he went without it, passed away, and what ensued after his passing was a very ugly legal battle, the center of which was a $25 million lawsuit. So in this era of hyper risk management, because no one wants to wind up in that kind of situation, it's very understandable that NFL teams not having the full benefit of complete information would back off. And that's where I asked the question, where was his agent? You're probably saying, well, who is his agent? His agent is Patrick Collins of CAA. CAA stands for Creative Artist Agency. They went into the athletic representation business about, what, six years ago, I believe. Six or seven, well, actually more than that, 10 years ago. It's been that long. But I digress. He has a number, Patrick does, a number of top-notch players under his belt, like, for example, Marcus Davenport, to name a number of them. And he, I, would, I would estimate, just conservatively, he probably has 10 players that he's representing in the draft. That's, that's a, a minimum. I noticed that in looking at Mr. Collins' Twitter feed, he stopped tweeting about Mr. Hurst after March 23rd, silence. And then I read somewhere else that he instructed Hurst not to talk to the media, not to give interviews after the combine um, around that time. And then all of a sudden came this rash of reports about his heart. They were always there. In fact, Gary Meyer of the um, New New York Daily News tweeted out that he had been cleared by his doctors and that he had the condition for some time and it was known through his time at Michigan. I read another account that he had been diagnosed with this with his heart condition, which they never really specifically spelled out what it was, okay, as far back as his freshman year. And then, of course, later... I heard someone mention the name Hank Gathers. So I've tried to piece all of this together. What this looks like, and I hope is not, is somewhere along the way, I'm only speculating, perhaps Hurst became disgruntled with his agent and fired his agent. And his agent perhaps re retaliated by pumping out this negative information in order to devalue his client so that no one else could pick him up and so that 
his stock would be hurt. Now, that's a nasty thing to do, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, okay? But it happened to Geno Smith. Geno didn't like how he felt his representatives were handling him or not. And so prior to the draft, he fired them. And since his agents went on a very public tear of discrediting him to whatever media person would listen. I didn't. I was at the NFL draft when Gino was there. But there are others I will not name. I have before, but I will not name who did. Okay? And they participated, those persons, media persons, in disseminating this negative information about Gino around the idea that he was an uppity black kid. But they didn't use those terms. It was more coded than that. And it was racist. It was racist. All right? This situation with Mr. Hurst, Hurst doesn't appear to be that on the surface. But if his agent is actively involved, he needs to make a statement on behalf of his client. Because what's happened in this social media environment is the, the message has gotten away from them. And that's his agent's fault. His agent needs to make a statement and say definitively what the situation was. And just look, put out information that is already there. He played in college with the condition. Here's his records. Here's his statistics. Here's how his doctor evaluated him. Here's the doctor who that was. And let that be that and have it posted where everyone can see it. The teams can see it. Fans can see it. People know. That wasn't done. So the agent not taking control of the narrative is something that makes me curious. And then about now, 20 minutes ago, Hearst tweeted out that it's in his the Lord upstairs hands. He's got prayer uh, that things will work out in his favor. He says someone will find him. They know, we all know you're there. But what this demonstrates is how powerful agents can be in the life of a person. And really, you know, it also sheds light on why it was smart in retrospect for Lamar Jackson to rely on just his mother. Because his mother is just that, family. Sometimes you can hire a person who isn't your family, who doesn't really care about you, and isn't really concerned about the message put out there by you. I'm not saying that Mr. Collins is that person, but he hasn't done anything of late to at least alter the course of events in the favor of his client.